Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to be talking through the ELISA test. Now, this ELISA test, or the enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay, as it stands for, is used in the detection of HIV viral particles, but it does have many other applications. The ELISA test measures samples that are very naturally low in concentration, so it can be used in uh, things like drug testing, for example, if you're looking for banned substances. But in this video, we're just going to talk about its use in detecting HIV. And there are, if you look online and in textbooks, many different sort of variations to, of the kind of method. But I'm going to give the most straightforward one that matches with the AQA uh, A-level syllabus. So what we're going to do is start with, ultimately, excuse the rough drawing, just a bit of an antigen-coated well. So we've got a beak there, some water in. And what we're going to do is have some antigen attached to the bottom of this surface. So what we've got are HIV antigens attached to the surface of a plate. So we've got a plate, and I've drawn a bit of beaker, but so we're, these little red dots are going to represent antigens, or more specifically, HIV antigens. And what we must do is really consider the surface of this plate, the surface that the antigens are applied to. It has to be something that these antigens are going to stick to fairly well. So that's just something to bear in mind, that it's got to be a consideration. So consideration given to the surface of the plate. Now the reason why I'm referring to that particularly is because I have seen an exam question that asks very much about what factors for the ELISA test are important to consider. So the type of surface that we attach these antigens to are really important to consider. Now what we do is we pour in a sample of blood from a patient. So I mean I said that this ultimately would be water but instead if we sort of water if we just colour this in so what ultimately we're going to fill this uh, well or this plate with is a sample from a patient that we suspect as being HIV positive or that we're trying ultimately to find out whether they are HIV positive. So this is a sample from the patient. Now what we're doing is looking to see if we have any antibodies against HIV, those that we're actually testing for. So the first thing we need to do, if we draw this plate out again, is wash The plate. Now it sounds unusual, but ultimately when we wash the plate, what we're going to do is remove any unattached antigen from that plate. So we wash, we wash the sample to remove any unattached antigen. Now what we're doing is, as I said, should the sample contain any antibodies against HIV, those antibodies and antigens would actually bind together. They have complementary shapes. You might recall on a previous video I've done on uh, antibodies that they have what's called an antigen binding site. So if the person did have HIV, they would have presumably made antibodies against the HIV. So those antibodies would attach to this antigen that we have in this plate. So a specific antibody would bind to that antigen. So let's just put that in place. So let's say here's our antigen again. And let's now just draw in some antibody. And you can see I've drawn the antibodies with this characteristic Y shape that they have. So this green 
the screen that I've drawn represents antibodies that may be present within the sample from the patient. So these are antibodies, and again, these red still representing our antigens. And these antibodies are, if you remember, keyword here is specific. They specifically bind to those antigens. Now, if we just draw this in again. So what we're ultimately saying is we have the antigens bound on a, bound to a plate. We wash, then we add a sample from the patient, and then this is what would happen once we've washed this second sort of plate or beaker that you can kind of see on the screen where these antibodies would bind. Now we need to ultimately wash again. Now the reason you would wash again is to remove any unbound antibodies or anything else that you don't want, that you're not involving in this process. So it's really important we wash at this second stage, second wash, to remove any antibody or anything else that is unbound to that antigen. Now what we find is that we have our antigens on the bottom of the plate. We have our specific antibodies that have attached. Now what we then do is have a second antibody. Now a second antibody that's prepared linked to a specific enzyme gets added to this plate. And that would bind to the HIV antibody. We then would add a substrate, and that substrate gets broken down by the enzyme, causing a colour change. And that would only happen if all molecules have attached. So what we do is we pour in another sample. And just for the purpose of this, we're just going to change the colour just to make it a little bit more obvious. So we're going to have, this time now... a second antibody attached to the HIV antibodies and attached to these antibodies are just use the letter E enzymes just to complete this shape, we'll colour this in so what you can see there, you've got these specific antibodies and antigens, but these are enzyme-linked antibodies. And these bind to our specific antibody that we're looking for in that sample. So we've had the red dot ultimately join to the green, the, the green uh, antibodies, and then those green antibodies stick to the blue ones with the enzyme. Then we will add a substrate, and this is the final stage to the ELISA test. We do, again, one further wash, and you can imagine, again, why we wash. If we wash, we're removing any unbound antibody again. Just add to that level of specificity in this particular test. So what we finish with would be, if we put all these in place, we'll have, I'll just draw three, just for simplicity here, we'll have our antigens, we'd have our antibodies that would have attached, we would have had our second antibody, and attach those second antibodies are these enzymes and then we'll pour in a substrate 
will pour in this substrate and if that enzyme has properly attached to the antibody and that second blue antibody has properly attached to the green antibody and that green antibody has complementary bound specifically to that antigen then the substrate gets broken down we get a colour change so we see this enzyme substrate complex forming ultimately so what you get here is an enzyme substrate complex forms and what that leads to is a colour change now should you get that colour change then you can confirm through this ELISA test that HIV is present in that person's sample. And if you just work this through with me just to finish, ultimately what we're saying is in this sample from the patient that we've taken, we're looking to see if they have HIV antibodies. They would have made HIV antibodies if they were infected with HIV. If they had antibodies present, they would, as you can see in this second plate, if this is... The, for this number one in number two their antibodies their specific antibodies would bind to the antigens present on the plate in number three we add a second so an enzyme linked antibody which would only bind to the green specific antibody if that has bound to the antigen so you can see one thing binds after another and should all that have been connected and bound by complementary uh, ultimately pairing. Then for number four, when we add the substrate, the enzyme should correctly form an enzyme substrate complex with it, resulting in that substrate breaking down, resulting in a colour change. And the colour change is what indicates uh, a positive HIV test. So there we have the enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay or the ELISA test for HIV. And as I said at the beginning, it's not solely used for HIV testing. Uh, this is what this video is predominantly referring to. Okay, hope all that helps.